Tom, I appreciate it. Um, our next speaker is Susan Gerbic. Uh, Undercover with the Grief Vampires and Skeptical Activism During the Pandemic. She's the co-founder of the Monterey County Skeptics, uh, she's a fellow with CSI, and of course, I uh, founded the Gorilla Skepticism there on Wikipedia, which is fantastic. Uh, the song she knows all the words to uh, is Bohemian Rhapsody. She <laughs> insists that you sing it with her tomorrow, as well as do some interpretive dance. Yeah. Hey, it's become a CSI tradition. Um, if she could have any uh, costume made for her, it would be that of a normal person. <laughs> That'd be a lot of work. A lot of work, but yeah. Uh, the oldest thing uh, in her fridge is an actively boiling homeopathic water. <laughs> just like, makes it cold because it's, yeah. Um, uh, when I asked who she would call uh, to get bailed out of jail, she said she'd call me because I would have all the people that other people have called for getting bailed out, which is a good answer. And uh, finally, the most physically scared she ever was, uh, was as she was giving birth, she actually realized she was gonna have a child. <laughs> I felt very scared at that moment. So again, uh, undercover with the grief vampires and skeptical activism during the pandemic, please welcome the one and only Susan Gerbeck. <laughs> So we have some things to cover. During the pandemic, I think you all noticed that we had a pandemic, there was a few things going on and we were really busy. And when I say we, I mean teams of people just like yourselves who never really, some of them have never been very active, now are quite active, and that's what I specialize in. So I'm gonna be breaking this talk down into several different bits. The first is gonna be mainly activism about uh, Gorilla Skeptics, which is the wing that we do the psychic stings. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about Wikipedia, and then I'm gonna have a little serious one-on-one -on -one talk with you guys in the last five minutes or so. So that's how it's gonna be breaking down. I have a few things to make sure I mention, and that is I'm gonna have a lot of slides that have some words on them, but try to ignore the words as much as possible. They're just a guide. Everything is on our, the website that you see here, abouttimeproject.org. I will show this slide several times, and that will be your cue to pull out your phones and take a picture of the slide. So when you have a chance, you can go and look at this, maybe Tuesday or so. So that's how it's gonna work. The other things I wanna mention is these people that I'm gonna be talking about in the gorilla skeptics, the gorilla skeptic part of the talk, which is the, the grief vampire talks, these are people who are being victimized. These are not people who are, uh, we should be belittling or thinking about as being um, some sort of, you know, not intelligent enough. But when you are going through grief, loneliness, uh, desperation, and so on, especially ex exasperated during the pandemic, that's kind of the things that happen. So keep that in mind. Anybody who has sat for a reading in the situations that the gorilla skeptics have, which is whenever they're actually watching people bawling their eyes out and terrified and desperate and just, you know, it's awful. It is not entertaining. So I know we might have a little laugh once in a while when we think of somebody who's lost their fortune to a psychic or whatever. It's not funny, okay? So I'll make that very clear. So we're gonna start talking about the the um, Gorilla Skeptics. So this is a little organization that I run. It's loose knit. We have people all over the world. They come and go, depending on what, um, how much time commitment they had. And I'm not taking active recruits for this at this time, because at the moment I've kind of shut down the Gorilla Skeptics. We're still following psychics. We're still archiving everything they do uh, that we can find. We tend to focus mainly on those people who are uh, I hate to say it, but celebrity kind of psychic. It's not the psychic necessarily down the street, but the psychic that is probably got a TV show, has a little more notoriety. That's the ones we really focus on. 
And when I say psychic, I'm really meaning those who claim to speak to the dead. So like the mediums, that's more of what I'm, I'm focusing on. So the gorilla skeptics, as I say, has gone over time, you know, various different uh, groups of people. And we've done a lot of different stings. And they're all on the website, which is the one I gave you. But I'm gonna be just talking about a couple. One of the first things we did during the pandemic is we went to every single website and social media that we could find for every gorilla, I mean, so every grief vampire, we call them grief vampires, a name uh, made famous by Mark Edward, my partner. And these are people who, who try to get a hook in you and they're really trying to, uh, uh, you know, these people are, who are in grief, they're really trying to, to, to get a hook into your grief and they manipulate it. So we went to all their websites, everywhere we could find because we felt that we wanted to see if anybody predicted the pandemic. Because that really hit everybody, right? Worldwide, even if you didn't die, well, you're here, thank you. But I mean, even if you didn't uh, have a death or whatever, it affected everyone, economically, lockdowns, mask wearing, and so on. So we went to all these websites and the way we were measuring if they had predicted uh, the pandemic or not, was to look and see what they had scheduled during the pandemic. Because if you were truly some sort of psychic, you would think you would have noticed that we were going to be locked down for years, right? A couple years or so, and that they're, they would be very disruptive. So we went to several. I'm going to show you three. This is Thomas John. He had a show over at Caesars. Now, don't read all these screens. I know you're trying to stop. This is just a guide. I have an article on the website. You can look at it in detail. Just pay attention to me. Eyes on me. Stop looking at the screen. <laughs> so it's just a guide. So one of the things that Thomas John did is he, you're still looking at the screen, okay? <laughs> so one of the things we noticed is he had put up in March, I think he started at Caesars in like January or December of 2019, if it was um, December. And what he did is he was telling everybody, hey, in March, you know, Ticketmaster has all of my tickets available into July. Make sure you get your tickets. Well, he didn't notice that he wouldn't be a Ticketmaster. In fact, nobody would be at Caesars in July. No, he didn't notice it. You can see all the cancels there on the screen. Another person that you may or may not know, this is Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium. And one of the things she was doing is she was, she not only had her events, and they were canceled, but she would turn around and she would reschedule the event only to have it canceled again. So um, <laughs> we saw this happen with many psychics, and in, in some of them, it was really odd, they would say on their website, it would say something like, hey, um, we'll let you know when it's safe to come back again and when it's safe to come back and it's publicly able to do this kind of thing. And I thought, well, shouldn't you know when we're gonna be able to come back again, when it's gonna be safe and the videos are starting to open? But it's funny how nobody notices these things. The last one we did was, uh, was John Edward, you know, the guy who knows his alphabet really well. And John Edward, what he's doing is he goes over to All-Star. Nobody else got that joke? I got Just it. Up. Thank you, there's one. Okay, so he always go over to Australia all the time and he would do uh, his tour over there. Well, he was canceled. Not only was he canceled, but everybody was canceled for going into Australia for a very long period of time. And that's because they did not see it coming. So those is, that is one of the things my gorilla skeptics and I did during the pandemic. Oh, hey, on Sunday, don't forget, make sure you show up. I know you're gonna be tired to the Sunday papers because that is one of the best parts of, of PsyCon is the Sunday papers. And my dear friend, Rob Palmer here in the front row. Uh, I don't know, wherever he was, he's somewhere. There he is, filming me, oddly enough. So Rob Palmer is going to be uh, giving a talk on the Australian Psychic Prediction Project. That was another thing we were involved in during the pandemic. So make sure you go and check that out. It's really going to be interesting. So I'm going to talk about one more thing. Now, this is, again, I wanted to warn you that the people that we're going to be talking about, these are victims, okay? And they're almost all women. And they are, there's no entertainment value whatsoever in this. So when you see for entertainment only, that's BS. There is no entertainment whatsoever in seeing these people desperate. Not only are you seeing the people um, who are getting readings bawling their eyes out, but what's also happening is the people in the comment section 
are screaming out for attention. They're just like, you know, please, 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 please call on me, please. You know, they're desperate. And what happens is this is not fun to see these people having just meltdowns because they're so desperate and lonely and, and trying to get um, attention to get the psychic to read them. So there's nothing wrong with the screen. I know you all had lunch and all. This is people's faces blurred out for privacy readings and I've taken their names off of there. So what we did a lot of the time is we attended, the Grill Skeptics and I, we would attend a lot of these functions happening on Zoom because the, the psychics went off over to Zoom, and so we did as well. A lot of the things we attended, there would be like 300 women there, again, almost all women, and they would be there on the screens, and then they would call people off one at a time, usually people with very unusual last name, full names, on the Zoom screen, and they would, they would go in and they would do a reading for them. Well, in the case of the people who hot read, if you don't know what that is, please check it out. Um, in the case of those, my team was also on these Zoom screens, and they're in as, um, you know, with their video turned off, with their Zoom screen, you know, the, the name changed, and we're just watching and observing them. And we could be on their social media within a couple minutes of the time the psychic has called them on. This is called hot reading. And we can see in life, we would say, oh, look, the dog died. I guess he's coming up next. And then here's the psychic saying, oh, there was this dog that died. You know? And we're like, yeah, we know, because we just looked at the same person's social media you're looking at. So this was very common. Now, these are adults, right? I think it's horrible what's happening to them. I have all my reasons why I think so. But I have this, you know, they can't spend the money the way they want to. These are adults. Where we cross the line is when we start getting into children. So Thomas John, the foreman person that I had talked about earlier, he decided he was gonna do a spirit reading for children ages five to 12, okay? It happened, he was gonna have it happen in April of 2021, and I thought, this is probably not a good idea. Eight children with their guardian, during school hours even, on Zoom, $400 each, okay? So why are you guys reacting for the $400 and not to the five of you all seeing them? You have the medium reading them. But that's what was going on. So I said, we should shut this down. I think this is dangerous. This is not a good idea. But what we did is we couldn't get it shut down. I went to everybody I could think of and I couldn't get anybody to shut it down. One person responded to me that has like a good platform I thought might be able to at least shame him enough or get enough fervor to get the shutdown of this, this talk. And that was Stephen Novella from Science Based Medicine, you know him from the SGU. And I thought, well, he's got a PhD, he's, a, he's in neuroscience, and he's, uh, he's, you know, he's at Yale. And I thought maybe that would do it, but it didn't. He wrote this article, you can read about it later, it's also on, my web, on the website, about it's probably not a good idea to have these children preyed upon by a uh, grief vampire. And um, it didn't work. Thomas John did see the article and he said, I'm going forward with it anyway because children are spiritual beings anyway and they need to have the horse, you know. So I didn't want it canceled, but when it was obviously too late, we had to attend ourselves because we had to know what was going on. It's a very long story I don't have time for. We called it Operation Onion Ring and it's on the website. You can look it up and, and read it in detail. It is a bit long for a reason, but what we were able to do is we were able to send some people to attend. Now I want you to imagine everybody who's been on Zoom, it's kind of hard to hide yourself on Zoom when there's eight screens and the psychic. So there's only nine people on the screen. So how am I, Susan Gerbeck, one of his biggest critics, going to attend his event on Zoom? And my entire Gorilla Skeptics team wanted to be able to watch it live because we have, let's just say there were some moles in the group. And so we needed to be able to, because it was a double blinded sting, we needed to be able to give them real time uh, information. So I, I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to read it for, for really too much, but I can just say we got in, I watched it live, Mark Edward, one of the biggest critics of psychics is in there watching it live and um, the uh, whole Gorilla Skeptics team is watching it live and we paid $800 to go 
and we use money from the J James Randi Educational Foundation to give me $800 to do this, and they couldn't tell, no surprise. So uh, we caught him twice, and we caught him so much his pants are on fire. It was, it was great, so you gotta check this out. I have the sting all written up, but I haven't released everything because I am hoping someday the media will take it seriously and want to go and do a story on Operation Onion Ring. So I've held back some of the video and all sorts of stuff because I'm hoping somebody will take it seriously. So this is the article you can find on Skeptical Inquirer, which is where I write. All the cool kids write there. And uh, <laughs> Operation Onion Ring, so you read all about that there. Read all about it. So I'm gonna switch hats very quickly. And I guess I have to speak a little faster. That timer seems to be really fast back there. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk about Wikipedia really quickly. I run a Wikipedia editing team. It's 12 years we've been doing this. It's called the Girl Skeptics on Wikipedia. I have a lot of people that are here. You can see them with their name, name tags or their shirts or their little stickers on that look like a, a gorilla shaking its fist or something. And so you can talk to them about any questions that you might have about Wikipedia. I can let you know that we are training people actively. It takes two to four months to get through our training. It is a wonderful program for people to be able to do activism in their homes. And we focus only on science, scientific skepticism, claims of the paranormal, and people of science, and we do this in all languages possible. 45% of all the work we do is in languages other than English. Pseudoscience doesn't end at a border anywhere. So again, I hope you were taking a picture of my screen and there'll be one more instance to take a picture of this website. So this is our Gorilla Skeptics team. This is an amazing team where we change things. Now I'm gonna go through this, I guess, a little quick. This is one example. The beginning of the pandemic, we started thinking that maybe vaccines might be a little important and people are gonna be reaching out to Wikipedia to get information. So one of the Wikipedia pages we wrote was for this group, Children's Health Defense. Anybody recognize the man on the screen? Yeah. Robert Kennedy Jr., one of the biggest anti-vaxxers out there. Oh, gee, I'm gonna sit down. This is his website. And we did we thought, you know, children and health and defense. We gotta get this sounds like a cool title. How would you know it's an anti-vax group unless you knew about this? So we wrote the Wikipedia page. Don't read this right now. But I I'm just gonna point out that in the lead, the very top part of the, of the Wikipedia page, there's some information up there about the, the organization that's highlighted there in yellow. And then on the, on the other side, there's a sidebar, it says alternative medicine. We're, we're, our team is notable for putting this information out there in those places, so it, because most people only read the very top lead or maybe take a quick glance at it. So it's very important to get this misinformation called out on Wikipedia, because it is the place where everybody goes to for their information. Not just you, 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 but the media gets their information from here. And we know that this is a problem because Children's Health Defense website has this big disclaimer on it, says censorship is hiding us from you. And then if you go to their website, you will see that they feel that they're being censored. And if you were to read this, not this moment, you would see it says <laughs> they've tried to give information to Wikipedia to get it to correct the misinformation on the Wikipedia page, but for some reason Wikipedia doesn't want to take it, and there's reasons because it's not, um, it, it, they're trying to say they're not an anti-vax group, not an anti-fluoridation group, and so on, but they are. So that's on their Wikipedia page, and they're pissed off about it, and nothing makes me happier. <laughs> so Children's Health Defense, is, if I haven't made it clear, we wrote the Wikipedia page for this in French and English, and this is a stat uh, tool that was written by Kyle Polish, who's the data skeptic, if you see him. Yeah, there he is, right there. Um, so he wrote this tool for us, it's called Stat Badger, and we can look at our views. Now we can only see how many views a page has got. We don't know anything else. We don't know if it's the same person going over and over. We don't know if they're reading the whole page. But you can see the spike here. Now don't worry about the numbers at the bottom or anything. You can see that there's this giant spike. It's getting a lot of views to the Children's Health Defense Wikipedia page we wrote. In fact, it's got over 405,000 views. That's a lot of views. So um, I'll do one more really quick. You may have heard of the America's Frontline Doctors, who are not. Um, and this has kind of been mainstream and gotten a lot more prominence because of the, the um, 
uh, insurrection, you know, that traitorous thing that happened uh, January 6th. So they got a lot more attention from that. This is another Wikipedia page we've written, and that page is already over 400,000 views as well. So we're getting a lot of information to people. We write these in other languages as well. So if you guys want to join, please come over and talk to me at my table in the CFI booth, and you can get more information. So in vaccine pages, vaccines only, uh, we've written a little over 110 pages vaccine related. Remember, 45% some languages outside of English. And this is where you'll hit, we're at 6 million page views on those Wikipedia pages. Something that we couldn't do as an individual, just one person, or even 100 people, we would have a hard time getting that much information out there. But because we're making sure that the Wikipedia pages are in great shape with great information, great citations, this is where a lot of people are going to get their information. Not just us, but the media and other people who are making the article, reading it, and then expanding it beyond their base. So, I do want to mention really quick, let's see if it's, it's this slide. Um, we are, uh, we have written a few pages. We've been around about 12 years. We have written lots of, we, we're always editing, so we're putting small things here and there, but as far as Editing, editing a Wikipedia page and writing it completely, either taking it from an awful looking stub and then rewriting it to something really quality. We've written 2,160 pages, which is what we've done. And those 2,160 pages are already over 124 million page views. So that's a lot of information. So that's not just a crowd, you know, sitting in armchair skepticism, thank you. And, uh, and, uh, the Neil deGrasse Tyson reminded me of how you can make the numbers sound bigger. So that's almost a quarter of a billion views. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Neil, for reminding me about that. So before I want to mention this also, if you're going to do any kind of activism, a person, a place, a thing you want to call out or really educate people, before you start that activism, make sure the Wikipedia page is in great shape because you may only have one shot at the media. You may go viral, but by the time you are viral, you, it's too late to start on the Wikipedia pages. So come and talk to my team if you want information on that. If you're planning anything, please let's get the Wikipedia pages in order first before the TV show comes out, before the viral thing happens, whatever, because that's what people are gonna turn to after they see whatever activism you do, they're gonna say, oh, well, what is that homeopathy thing? And they're, so the Wikipedia pages need to be well-written first. So now, here's where I get to go to my, ooh, I'm on time. So this is where I get to go to the, let's have a talk, going to the herding cats kind of thing. This is what I specialize in. I was a baby photographer for 37 years, JC Penney's. And I, now use those skills to work with people, to manage people. So a few years ago, we had this March for Science um, and we had a great time. I went, I'm in Monterey area, I went, I had a great time. The picture of the people in the background I took, still, still speaking for the woodpeckers, I love this slide. And what happened is we came out in droves and we wore our nerdy shirts and we had our nerdy posters and everything was amazing and it was so much fun to be around such like-minded people in science. And I went on tour afterwards and I went Australia, New Zealand, Europe, and all over the United States. This is taken in Arizona. And I did this talk called March for Science. Now what? And what I was trying to explain is that what happened is the March for Science was just basically slacktivism. If you don't know that word, there's a Wikipedia page you can look up. Slacktivism. <laughs> we didn't write it. Uh, Brian Dunning talks about this uh, on one of his podcasts, Skeptoid. I don't know if he's here or not. But um, Skeptoid talks about slacktivism and how it's actually a detriment because you feel like you've done something, and so you're less likely to do something that really does matter because you've, you've um, done something, like like something on Facebook or whatever, and then you're like, oh, I did something. But so the March for Science was fun and wonderful, but there was no follow-up, there was no leadership, there was nothing that really got something taken care of. Because remember what happened right after the March for Science, you know, we had elected that administration that I shall not name, but the, that nonsense. And then we've had some of the worst anti-science we've lived through, anti-intellectualism, anti-experts. It's just been horrible. And I blame us 
And I say all of us, including myself, because what happened is we didn't take it seriously. And I've been saying this for a long time. We have to take this seriously. It's going to come back and bite us in the butt. And it is. We just went through this pandemic. And thank you for showing up, you guys, because it's half of activism. And look at, we're almost of us, all of us are unmasked. And we're able to be here safely because of the science and how amazing science is and how wonderful from shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder we were able to come out with these vaccines so quickly. So this is a really great, powerful moment. So yay science, right? Yay science. So, <laughs> so we're able to do this just a couple years after. Now, we spent time, remember the flat earthers? They were a good laugh, right? Hollow earthers, oh my God, how stupid these people are. But what happened is, while we were laughing, and I like a good laugh, while we were making fun of these people for their anti-science nonsense, or as Harriet Hall would call it, tooth fairy science, we were laughing at them, but in the meantime, all the magical thinking, all the conspiracy theories that they were experiencing just kept going farther into the rabbit hole, as Mick West would call it, and we didn't really we, you know, we talked about it and laughed about it, but we just didn't take it seriously to get them out of there, or at least learn enough about how to help. And what happened is they turned into QAnon, and they turned into anti-vaccine, anti-maskers, and so on, and they literally killed us. So not only did they come back to bite us in the ass, they're killing people with this anti-science nonsense. And as I'm trying to talk to you guys, herding cats, we have to take this seriously. We can no longer turn around and say, they'll take care of it. The administration will take care of it. We have to take care of this. It is our issue. We are scientific skeptics. And my goodness, if there's a crowd to talk to about this, it's you all and anybody who might be watching this video later. So I'm sorry, I get a little passionate about it, but this is how it feels. So I'm gonna talk about something really quickly. This is a really great, uh, pamphlet by Daniel Loxton, we uh, respect, he's now writing for Skeptical Inquirer, so that's really cool. This is from 2007, it's a little dated, but as I was looking through it, I said, this is pretty damn good. So this is on my website, you can also Google it, you can take a photo of it now if you want to remind yourself to go back and look at this. This has got lots of ideas about activism that people can do, small to large. Also, I have something else coming up that I can't really talk about in depth because we're in the middle of the activism. But if you have not already heard of facilitated communication, Janice Boyden was here at PsychCon the last time that we had PsychCon, amazing, strong woman. Um, and she's been kind of leading a team of people that I'm involved in, and it's facilitated communication. We can't talk about what's gonna happen. It's still, like I said, uncovering and going on. But before you start hearing what the final results of these cool things that might happen really soon, you might want to get educated on it. So this is your warning, this is your two minute warning. Go and read about facilitated communication. The Wikipedia pages are amazing because rule number one, get the Wikipedia pages in great shape before the media and the world starts looking at it. So the Wikipedia pages are amazing. And then also facilitatedcommunication.org is a wonderful website to get into the weeds of it. Oh, look at this. <laughs> There's Wendy Hughes. So right here in the front row, this is just going, oh my God, I'm on the screen. So uh, Wendy just wrote an article for Skeptical Inquirer. I urged her to do this because it's a powerful essay on romance scams. It's only been out like since Tuesday. Oops, sorry, Tuesday. So if you get a chance, please read this. It is so great. And not only is it romance scams, are a thing, and they've been for a long time, this is a very powerful, very strong woman who did this. And trust me, it's emotional, and she did this, and she put her name and face on it. And that's, that's kudos to her, very strong woman. <laughs> All the, I mean, everything that was old is now new. If you get a chance to check out Warren Pankras' uh, book on modern swindlers, check it out. 
you can just substitute some of the, just modernize it a little bit. All those scams are still going on. So it's not just romance scams, it's everything out there. It's incredible the things that people used to do and how similar they are to now. So check that out. So I'm about to end. Oh my God, on time somehow. And this is James Randy and myself. And I, I really miss James Randy. So I want you guys to understand that we cannot, it's hard to look at the picture. We cannot ever replace this man. But, and I hear this all the time, who's gonna replace James Randy? Nobody's gonna replace James Randy, but together as a group, we have more of a chance. We can, as a group, be more together, and we can probably do a lot more as a group. Um, in the CFI uh, break room, um, book room, you can come visit our table. I do have this QR code and some other things. One of the things I'm doing for CFI is to try to get the groups back. So we lost a lot during the pandemic. So what we really want you to do is come and have a discussion with probably me um, about joining the affiliate. It sounds really awful, but it's like, we're just trying to get a website built at the moment to get all the groups on it. And so that we can see who, um, who's still active, who's not, who needs a group, who's trying to form a group, who wants to find a group so that we can start meeting in public again. So again, this is my last slide. This is your chance to take a picture of that screen. So we can please get you over there to look at all the things that are on the website. There's tons of information out there. And I really do believe that together as a group, we can really do great things. So juntos si se puede. Susan, the Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Oh, we all miss Randy. Those of us that know, we all miss Randy. I do recommend check out the uh, Wendy's article. It is quite, quite illuminating and interesting. All right, moving right along. Um, our next speaker is Nick Tiller. Uh, his talk is called Science and Pseudoscience in Health and Wellness When Medicines Go Rogue. He's a researcher in applied physiology, and he wrote a fantastic book, The Skeptic's Guide to Sports Science. There is so much sports woo that is out there. It's nice to see someone on the other side of it giving actual decent information. Uh, he said any Metallica song, any Metallica song, he knows all the words to. So please challenge him at some point. Um, the costume he'd want to have made for him would be Wolverine, which is nice. Uh, the oldest thing in his fridge, he said, are the shelves. <laughs> Very healthy man. Um, the person he would call to bail him out of jail was uh, also Wolverine. It's a good, good plan. And uh, the most frightened he ever was, quickly, he was doing a 50K ultra marathon. It's these like crazy races that you do, you know, 100 miles, 50 miles, whatever. He was doing a race, he got lost, ended up literally on the side of a mountain and had to kind of slide down on his posterior down this mountain. He wasn't sure if he was going to live or die uh, to 